In this video, I'm going to show you nine powerful editing tricks that will seriously boost your workflow in DaVinci Resolve. These techniques will not only help you edit faster, smoother, and more efficiently, but they'll also make sure that your final videos are a lot more polished and professional. So let's dive in. The first tip I want to show you is going to be a major time saver. It's creating your own custom project templates. This will streamline your editing workflow by providing a consistent starting point with pre-organized folders and timelines for all your videos. Here's how you can create a custom project template. When you open up Resolve, select New Project and name it Template. Then open up the project settings by clicking the cogwheel icon on the bottom right. Here you can set everything up however you need it. So you can set up your frame rate, proxy settings, color management settings, and so on. Once you're done, hit save. Then you can go and make as many bins as you need for the media that you typically import into your projects. A-roll, B-roll, audio, graphics, and so on. In my timeline spin, I'm also going to create a new timeline. This is going to be my edit timeline. And you can create as many timelines as you would usually need. I'm going to set up this timeline the way I would typically need it for editing these types of YouTube videos. So there's usually about four video tracks for A-roll, B-roll, and titles. And five audio tracks for my voice, music, and sound effects. Next, I'll go to the Fairlight tab. So this is where you can do track-based audio editing. And I actually have presets saved for certain things like my talking head audio or the music that's playing while I'm talking. Now, I'm not gonna go into detail about this right now. All you basically need to know is that I'm applying these effects to the appropriate tracks. So I've got my equalizer, voice isolation, compressor, and all that stuff set up the way I need it for every track. Back in the edit tab, you can even grab a custom title that you might use in all of your videos and put that into the timeline. All right, now once you have everything set up in your project the way you want it, make sure you save it by hitting Command or Control S. Now, the next time when you open up Resolve, you'll see that the template project is there in your project manager window. Right click it and select open in read only mode. Once it's open, make sure you save it as its own project by going to file, save project as. And right now you have your project completely set up and ready to go with the entire bin structure in place and the timeline with all the video and audio tracks, plus all the track effects you would typically use. Tip number two is going to be great if you already have an organization system or a folder structure in your operating system. So for example, I've got this folder here where everything is already neatly organized. We've got an A-roll folder with two cameras, we've got an audio folder, music folder, and I want to keep this structure in my DaVinci Resolve project. If I would simply drag this folder into the media pool here, you can see the nice folder structure I had in my operating system is completely gone. So instead of dragging the folder into this larger media pool section, drag it into the sidebar on the top right and drop it there. Now DaVinci will keep your folder structure and also keep the same name as in your operating system. So in a matter of seconds, you've got all your media imported and an organized bin structure ready to go. This also works if you already have a bin structure set up in DaVinci and you just want to import certain folders into those. So let's say I have my bin structure from before and in the A-roll bin, I want to import the footage from these two cameras and keep the folders as well. I just select the two folders in my operating system, drag them over to the A-roll bin in DaVinci and boom, it creates two new bins within that A-roll bin and all of my footage is there and organized. The next tip is a great way to navigate the timeline. Now, there are a bunch of different ways to navigate the timeline. One is, of course, to use the scroll bar on the bottom or the sides, but this is not very efficient. You can also hold Command or Control and scroll your middle mouse wheel, and then you'll go left or right on the timeline. And I actually use this quite a lot, but by far the easiest and fastest way to navigate the timeline in every direction is by clicking that middle mouse button. So in the timeline, you just click and hold the middle mouse button and then drag left or right to move the timeline. And if you have multiple tracks, you can also drag up and down to navigate in that direction. All right, tip number four is another one to help you navigate the timeline much quicker. This one is the zoom to fit shortcut. Head over to your keyboard customization, then search for zoom to fit. It's this one right here under view, zoom, and then zoom to fit. 
You can set it to whatever key you like. I have it set to control Z. Now, when you're zoomed into your timeline and you want to quickly see your entire timeline, you can just hit the shortcut and DaVinci will fit the entire timeline on the screen. If you want to zoom in again to that same amount, just hit the shortcut again. And when you move your playhead to a different position on the timeline and hit the shortcut, it will also zoom into that same amount, but in that new position. All right, tip number five is going to be great if you have a timeline with a lot of tracks stacked on top of each other. Like in this example right here, where I've got a number of title tracks. And let's say I want to quickly move this title on the top track, so one track up, but I can't see the track where it has to go. And if I try to drag this title with my mouse, it's sometimes just a little bit buggy, or it moves four or five tracks up at once, or sometimes it just doesn't work at all. You could of course just zoom out and change the size of the timeline window, but let's be fair, that's just really annoying, right? So a better way to move something up a track in the timeline is by using the shortcut Option or Alt Arrow Up. And this also works if you select multiple items and then hit Option or Alt Arrow Up. It will move all those things you selected one track up. Tip number six is another super easy shortcut that's going to make you a lot more efficient and also save you a bunch of headaches. Here we've got a video pretty much completely edited and cut together. But let's say I now want to add something right here in the middle of the video. Typically what you would see most people do is highlight everything with the mouse, move it over to the right, then insert whatever it is you want in there, then highlight those clips again, making sure you didn't accidentally miss anything, and then move them over to the left again. Well, there is a much faster way to do all of that. First, make sure your playhead is positioned where you want to insert something. Then hit Option or Alt Y and DaVinci will automatically select everything on the right of the playhead. You can now drag all of that over and insert whatever you need. Hit Option or Alt Y again and drag everything back. You can also select everything on the left by hitting Option or Alt plus Command or Control Y and that will make an automatic selection of everything on the left of your playhead. Alright, this next one is going to save a lot of you guys from making a very, very common mistake. If you're moving around your footage with the transform controls, it's probably happened a few times that you accidentally moved it to where there is a little bit of black. And it can sometimes be super difficult to see this because the area surrounding your footage is also pretty dark. So it would be really great if you could have something else underneath your footage to make it more obvious where your footage ends. Well, you actually can. If you click this icon right here where it says Timeline View Options, you will see an option that says Viewer Background. And you can change that to gray, which already works a lot better than black, but by far the best option I think is Checkerboard. And now it kind of looks like something you'd see in Photoshop and you can very obviously see if you've moved the footage too far. All right, the next tip is super useful if you are working with external audio. So if the audio you need to use was not recorded directly into the camera, but with an external audio recorder. For these YouTube videos, for example, I record my audio directly into my microphone because that gives me much higher audio quality. And then later I sync those audio files with my video files. So in my DaVinci project, I've got a bin with all my talking head video files and another one with all my audio files from the microphone. Now how you could match up all of these clips is grab one of the video files, drag that onto the timeline, and then grab the corresponding audio file and drag that onto the timeline as well. With both clips selected, right click, choose auto align clips and align the clips by waveform. It will do a good job at lining those up and snapping everything into place. But there's actually a much quicker way to do this if you have a lot of different clips. You can actually synchronize these clips in the media bins. Select the two bins by holding command or control. This will open both of the bins at the same time and you can see that both of them are highlighted here. And if we just scroll down, you can see all the video files as well as all the audio files are in there. Now I'll hit Command or Control A to select all of these files. And then I'll right click and select Auto Sync Audio. Select Waveform and I'll leave the channel number on automatic. 
We can also select to retain the embedded audio and we can retain the video metadata, but I'm going to leave both of these off. Retain embedded audio is going to create multiple audio tracks when we later drag the clips onto our timeline. So the original audio from the camera plus the good audio from the microphone. And I don't need to see that original camera audio, so that's why I'm leaving that option off. Then we hit sync and it will analyze all those clips. Once it's done, I can go to one of my video clips and drag it into the timeline. You'll see that down here there is a little circle on the audio track. That means that it's linked to external audio. If I right click and go to clip attributes, you'll see that in the audio page it says linked channel 1. And if I wanted to, I can change this to embedded channel 1 or 2, which are my right and left channels of my camera audio. So I still have quick and easy access to my original camera audio if I needed it. Now, if you're editing a lot of videos with voiceovers or talking heads or interviews, you'll know that adding fades and crossfades to your clips is vital for making your audio sound good. It will remove any weird pops, cuts, or breathing sounds and just make your audio flow much better. You'll also know that this is a terribly time-consuming process. So instead of applying these fades to every clip individually, you can actually batch apply them to all the clips in your timeline. Head over to the Fairlight page and select Batch Fade Settings. Activate Fade In, Crossfade and Fade Out. Make sure you uncheck the Override Existing boxes. And for Fade In, you want to set it to Linear and change the length to 3 frames. For Fade Out, choose Exponential Fade and also change the length to 3 frames. For crossfade, make sure the length is set to two frames and that is set to equal power. Then hit apply. Now select the entire audio track where you want to apply the fades. Go to the Fairlight menu and choose apply batch fades. Now if we zoom in, you can see that the relevant fades are applied to each clip. So the ending clips have an exponential fade out, the beginning of clips has a linear fade in and the connecting clips have crossfades. All right, so that's it. Those are nine awesome time-saving tricks in DaVinci Resolve that have seriously improved my workflow and made editing a heck of a lot easier and faster. If you have any questions, be sure to drop them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Anyway, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.